In September of last year, we went to Fort Loudon Lake in Tennessee to test this new 25 foot beast of a boat, the Super SE 550. We quickly put out a part one of our review of this boat and promised a part two over the winter, but then the campfire happened. We have had a really rough winter and there have been times when I lay on my bed or drove in my car and just dreamed of the spring and getting to pick up this new SE 550 and finally surf it all season. It really kept us all going. That time is here. We just picked up the boat today and we can't be more stoked. We loaded up our boards, gear, and lead to get it on the road. This behemoth dwarfs my truck. If you haven't seen part one of our review, you really should go watch it now. When we tested the SC550 in September, we tested it stock. And with 1,000 pounds of additional lead on top of the already huge subfloor 4,100 pounds of ballast. The wave was outstanding, but this was our first time on this boat, and this boat has no history yet, and the conditions were not the best. Jessie was surfing outstanding and even dropped a skill bomb, as she calls it, when she did a transfer on the first try. Whitney did her handstand with Ken. Emmy surfed with all seriousness, trying not to ever smile. Mom fears change and was so nervous to even think of leaving the SL, but she rode great and was put at ease. RJ went out in his new chaos and he just killed it. Some of the best riding I have seen from him to date. sped up a bit and saw that wave get super long. Imagine that long wave with 4,100 pounds of stock ballast, 1,000 pounds of lead, 6,200 pounds of dry weight, about 1,000 pounds of gear, and then 2,000 pounds or so of people and gas. That is over 14,000 pounds of displacement, and yet at 13 miles per hour in this setup, we only turned 3,650 RPM. It still boggles my mind and I don't quite get it and I cannot wait in the coming weeks to dial her in even more and really see what she can do. Even with the subpar conditions, I personally had the best surf session of my life. I could surf at 11.2 miles per hour with ease for the first time since I have begun surfing. Normally, I can't surf faster than about 10.8. I could ride all over the wave and do more without falling out than I ever have before. The push and the hook of the wave were so substantial that when I would carve or do a fat guy slash and lose speed, the back of the wave picked me up and cradled me forward. There's no other way to describe it. Listen to me in this clip where I am saying that I need more wax on the board. It's such a hill! My feet are slipping! My foot's slipping forward! The wave is such a massive hill that my front foot is continually sliding forward down the hill. After the new wax, I was able to continue enjoying my favorite wave to date. The transition was not quite as smooth as the SL, but it had more power, more firmness, and more speed, and I could do more and use more of the wave. I surfed till I couldn't go any further and have been dreaming about this ride all winter. In the coming weeks, we are going to be sharing lots of video and tests and stats as we always do, so stay tuned. I did promise more video of the rest of the boat, so I'm going to leave you with some great shots we got in September of the interior and the cavernous storage. 
After a day or so of top secret testing, we will be dialing in this boat with some friends, Allison Sauce and Rhea Walker, and then off to the lake house on Lake Norris with the family. RJ and Emmy and Ken and Whitney, as well as some other family will be joining us. We will then head over to Lake Cumberland and at least one other lake in Kentucky, and then probably a couple of unplanned lake stops on the way home. Be sure to visit our YouTube channel or Facebook page to find out how you can surf with us during several of these stops. Trust me, you want to try this wave.